Since part one of this review, Elizabeth Banks has released another film called Cocaine Bear. And yeah, this is a real film that actually exists. It came out, and then it was promptly forgotten about, much like Charlie's Angels. Despite having an amusing title and premise, the film does nothing with it. You know, when it comes to a film like this, there are only two paths to choose from. The first path you can take is to make a movie so bad that it's funny, or at least a movie that's so over the top and goofy that it's funny. Embrace the awful title and just make something so stupid, so laughably dumb, that it actually ends up being entertaining, a la the legendary works of Roger Corman, or even the films directed and produced by Lloyd Kaufman. The Toxic Avenger! He's a different kind of hero. Look out! No one will be adapting Cocaine Bear into a Broadway musical 20 years from now, that's for sure. The second route you could take, and brace yourselves for this, is to actually make a good movie, a horror comedy with expertly crafted horror sequences, sharp and clever jokes that hit the mark, and characters that stick with you long after the credits roll. Picture a film that takes inspiration from great horror comedies, such as Shaun of the Dead. Cocaine Bear couldn't do either, it just sits there like a sad, confused lump, not knowing what it wants to be or what it wants to accomplish. In its brief runtime, it manages to achieve the impressive feat of absolutely nothing, except lining Elizabeth Banks' wallet with more money. They don't call her Elizabeth Banks for nothing. Oh, and let's not forget the grand ensemble of a hundred characters. Ray Liotta's in the film as well, blink and you'll miss him. But hey, you can still throw him in the trailer and the poster and trick people into thinking he'll be in the movie more. Cocaine Bear has a staggering number of characters for absolutely no reason. It's like they were aiming for a world record. What's the saddest part of all this? Despite the Charlie's Angels film being the cinematic equivalent of taking a sledgehammer to my ball sack, <laughs> It was putting in some effort, however feeble it may have been, and it attempted to convey a positive message to the youth about throwing men into grinders, <laughs> throwing men out of windows. Should we toss him? Yeah, let's do it. And shooting men in the neck with poisonous darts. Cocaine Bear doesn't accomplish anything, and it isn't funny. The more I think about this movie, the more I hate it. The more I just find it to be a complete waste of time. This should really give you some insight into the brilliance of Elizabeth Banks' directing talent. And we can tie that back into Charlie's Angels. The music is terrible, the characters are terrible, and everything else is terrible. Ella Belinska in this film? She's like, really tall? Did they even bother to screen test her with the other angels? Or did they just not care? The poor girl has to crouch down during certain scenes. I'm surprised her back didn't give out in some of these scenes from crouching so much. Let's not dwell too much on Ella's towering presence. Another point I want to make is that the humor is just terrible. Probably just as bad and unfunny as Cocaine Bear. <laughs> Now they do make the Hamburger joke in this movie, which is a joke I made in part one of this review. Hamburg, interestingly, not where hamburgers were invented, that was in Frankfurt. What makes these scenes worse? The constant tonal shifts that don't work at all. A major character like Bosley dies, but in the next scene we forget about it and are back onto dumb jokes. We just need to figure out exactly where your Mr. Fleming is meeting his mystery buyer and get Callisto back before it becomes every bad guy's favorite new weapon. Like uh, suitcase nukes, mm. pet tigers, jet skis, sea dews, cars that go fast really furiously. So is that a fast and furious joke? Cars that go fast really furiously? I, I don't even know what that is. How about this hilarious scene where they're picking out hairstyles for their mission? Bowl cuts. Bowl cuts. Bowl cuts. Bowl cuts. <laughs> How about you cut that scene out of the movie? I'm not going to go through every unfunny joke in this movie because then I would just be playing the entire movie at that point. Another thing that sucked was the action and stunt choreography. Many of the scenes in this movie were so quickly cut 
and poorly edited. There's slow motion added to certain shots and it just feels like they had to fix everything in editing because there was no real coordination or planning done on set. Now I show this clip in part one, but I didn't really break down how this doesn't make any sense. So Ella Belinska decides it's a brilliant idea to hang out of the car. She's all cool and badass until she realizes Bosley got shot in the neck. Oops. Instead of, you know, making a swift getaway or finding a convenient alley to disappear into, Ella decides she wants that cool trailer moment. And magically, the bad guy's vehicle stops right behind them in one moment, only to teleport next to them in a perfect T-bone position the next. So let's not forget that Ella is supposed to be the best spy in the world, basically, but she conveniently fails to notice the impending car crash. I can't blame her, though. The villain's car doesn't make any noise either. Bosley! It's the most quiet car in the world as it drives forward to ram them. Bosley! Also, they play that annoying violin crescendo I complain about in every review I've ever made. Bosley! It's like a loyal companion of mine at this point, accompanying me through my many disappointments in life. The car takes a trip down a flight of stairs. As soon as they reach the bottom, the villain's car gives them a little love tap, and suddenly, they're airborne, defying all known laws of physics. Then the front of the car hits the ground a bit, and the trunk opens. And in the blink of an eye, Ella Belinska is flying out of the trunk of the car. <laughs> I guess you should have been wearing your seatbelt instead of trying to do some super badass move hanging out of the car. So there you have it folks, Charlie's Angels, a pointless film that defies all logic and reason to deliver an experience that absolutely no one will ever enjoy ever. Hey, we had a deal, alright? Alright, alright, I got it. No more shit talking Elizabeth Banks. No more talking about Cocaine Bear or Charlie's Angels the movie. That we're done with that. Believe it or not, this isn't the only awful piece of Charlie's Angels media from the past decade. Or almost decade, a little more than a decade. There's a series that debuted in 2011 called Charlie's Angels. The series stars Annie Alonze, Rachel Taylor, and Minka Kelly. The show has a few guest stars as well that you might have heard of, such as Ivana Milicevic, Peyton List from Mad Men, the guy from Punisher Warzone who got his face smashed in, and even Pedro Pascal. You might have heard of him. So without further ado, let's get into the Charlie's Angels TV series. Charlie's Angels, the 2011 series, is basically what we like to call in the industry an utter train wreck. Bosley, Adult Swim is over. Excuse me, ladies. Duty calls. Oh wow, Adult Swim. Get it? Like the Adult Swim? The series was developed by Alfred Goh and Miles Millar. Alfred Goh and Miles Millar are mainly known for creating the show Smallville, about a young Clark Kent Superman before Zack Snyder ruined his character. These two also brought us the series Wednesday, a clever twist on the beloved Adams Family. I do have to admit though, focusing on a different aspect of a well-known story can actually be intriguing. So while Go and Millar may have some hits, Charlie's Angels, the series, falls flat on its pretty little face. It lacks the innovation and fresh perspective that made their other endeavors somewhat interesting and successful. Instead, we're left with a recycled mess, a sad attempt to ride on the coattails of a nostalgic franchise without bringing anything new to the table. Drew Barrymore is also a producer on this series, and like I said in part one, she's a Charlie's Angels fan, so that makes sense. Episode one is the origin story for Minka Kelly's character. So that whole origin story for Naomi Scott's character in the movie isn't even the first time they've done this. At this point, there's a different woman on the team named Gloria. Not that Gloria. The music choices are so obnoxious in this show, and it's constant. Oh! Sorry, I managed to kill your martini and mortally wound your shirt. <laughs> it's not a... Uh... Not fatal. It moves so fast, and the editing is just so atrocious, especially the transitions. Has the buyer's rope touched down? Walking off his G6 as we speak. The dialogue is either boring exposition or just awful jokes. I'll do anything. You're gonna make a phone call, and you better be Oscar worthy. So, what is this episode about? Angels, you're looking for a 16 year old runaway. Her name is Sarah Daniels. She's being held captive in a room somewhere in the Falcon Hotel. 
Well, it's about the fun concept of human trafficking. This is exactly what I want to watch on network TV. So Gloria walks over to the car and gets blown up. <laughs> Oh no, I really got to know her over these past eight minutes. Meanwhile, Bosley went off on some date and he comes back and he's like, Oh man, one of the angels died. So tragic. How's Charlie? Devastating. Losing an angel is his worst nightmare. Yeah, he seems really broken up about it. Man. Just remember, you're angels of justice, not angels of vengeance. Just remember. You're angels of justice, not angels of vengeance. Jesus Christ. What's that shadow on the back of her neck? Yeah, there's something on her neck. Let's enhance the image a thousand times. That is impossible. It's one of my favorite cliches ever. It means they were members of the same car boosting crew. I don't get it. Gloria waved goodbye to that life when she enlisted with Uncle Sam. Who talks like this? The people making this show just assume the audience has a low attention span, so let's just throw in a pointless action scene. Very obvious stunt double, unless Rachel Taylor managed to grow a beard. So they introduce Minka Kelly, right? And uh, she's just like this girl who used to be friends with Gloria. That doesn't make me guilty. This is a very serious moment because she's talking through her teeth. It's very serious and dramatic. I'm not playing this game. Gloria was like a sister to me. And she ends up becoming an angel by the end of the episode. And that other woman was just a misdirection, as it turns out. Like, she's just not in the show from this point on. Great writing, guys. I didn't see that coming. So they decide to check out Gloria's apartment and they find a litter box. But Minka Kelly says she's allergic to cats. Since when did Gloria have a cat? She didn't. Yeah, she's allergic. And what's she doing with the kitty litter box? So they move the litter box and they find a hidden safe under it? Did she need to have a litter box? It could have been anything. It could have been a piece of furniture, but she has a litter box so that Charlie's Angels could figure it out. We're 20 minutes into this episode, by the way, and so far they've introduced the characters of Bosley and three of the angels. The angels rescued a 16-year-old girl, one of the angels died, then they found a new angel who they thought was a bad guy, then it turns out she's a good guy because she was attacked in an action scene, then they conduct a whole investigation, one of the angels betrays them, then they win her back, and then they betray her again, then Charlie hires her. And this all happened in 20 minutes. Check out Bosley's pickup game. 58 servers, 29 busboys, 16 valets, 2 ice sculptures, and one very beautiful woman. And then they, they just knock her out and put her in the van. They drive away and just abandon Mika Kelly's character, who is also undercover there. Then, of course, she gets kidnapped. Well, of course she did. You left her, you bunch of dumbasses. So they make this Russian woman think she's on a plane flying to somewhere to get some information out of her or something. We're 25,000 feet above the Atlantic and route to St. Petersburg. Ripping off a Russian crime boss wasn't exactly the smartest idea. The twist is, they're still in the hangar, and they were just blowing air alongside the plane with a fan. What? what? It's so easy to tell that a plane is in the air when you're inside of the plane. And what, they were just blowing some smoke alongside the plane? Like, did she not see the sky? It looks like a hangar. Like, what? It, this doesn't make any sense. So another pointless, poorly shot action scene goes by. They catch the bad guy, and then they offer Minka Kelly to be a part of the Charlie's Angels. <laughs> That was a terrible pilot. Anyway, episode two starts with more shit pop music while the angels are undercover at a fashion show, looking for a stalker who might be responsible for kidnapping a girl. They see a photographer and suspect that he's the stalker for some reason. It doesn't help though that the stalker notices them looking at him. Great spy work, you get found out immediately. Speaking of that, these spies get found out a lot. They have to be just the worst spies ever. Who are you just talking to? They have to keep throwing in references to social media, I guess to create this illusion that the show is relevant or something. According to her Facebook page, she's on the hunt for a new roommate. According to her Facebook page, Jesus. According to his Twitter feed, Rodrigo is hosting a charity fundraiser at his mansion tomorrow night. Up, oh, the show's starting to get boring. Time for obnoxious music and scene transitions. <laughs> So 
So the plot of this episode is this guy gets hot models, right, to live with him in his house, and then he makes the women marry cartel members so that they can get a green card. <laughs> and they find another hidden compartment, like in episode one with the cat litter. We're already recycling plot points, right? And this is episode two of the show. They look through this apartment, they get shot at by a sniper, they cut to commercial break, and the sniper is going to kill the Russian first lady. So the Charlie's Angels have to stop the sniper because the Russian first lady is for some reason out in public watching a random dance act in the park. Why is the Russian first lady in frickin' Miami? I don't know. So something they really don't get into with the show, but I feel I need to address. Like this scene, they go to a room alone, but then he gets a call and he has to leave. Yes. The bidders have arrived. Let's get going. I have to go. But if he didn't get that call, she would have to, like, f him, right? Who would want to be a Charlie's Angel at this point? It's just this weird guy talking to you over an intercom and is forcing you to f all these weird evil men. This guy has to leave because he gets a call, or there's some other convenience to make the audience not stop to think, Wait. Once upon a time, there were three young women who got into very big trouble. Now, they work for me. Can you believe this Charlie guy? He's supposed to be the head of this big spy agency. Meanwhile, all he does is he takes advantage of women who work for him. What a piece of shit! Geez, very passionate about this subject, huh? Well, just so you know, I actually have Charlie's phone number if you want to talk to him personally. You could totally talk to him if you want. Wait, so you're telling me you can get me on the phone with this asshole? Hello, sir? Yeah, this is Ralph the Movie Maker. I wanted to talk to you about how you treat your angels and- Shut the fuck up. I'm sorry, what was that? I said calm down and shut the fuck up. What's the problem? Oh, well the problem is you claim to run a spy agency, but really you're just exploiting women, making them go out there and, and abusing themselves. All right, go fuck yourself. That shit has nothing to do with me. All right, I run a legitimate business here. What's your name, What's sir? What's your name, man? I'm Ralph the Movie Maker! You're sick! No, 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 shut up! Shut the fuck up! Shut up! Will you shut up? Shut up! Shut! 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 Shut up! Why don't you? You can go fuck yourself. Did you just say go fuck myself? You did. I don't think that did anything. Episode three starts with a flashback. You can tell because it's color corrected blue. And Annie Alonza chases down this reporter who is taking photos of their secret meeting where she's doing something illegal. So the Charlie's Angels go onto the island, they sneak onto this beach, and this is when you realize as a viewer that these three just do not make convincing spies. They look like they're playing pretend. And I'm not saying that women can't be badass spies. There are movies where women are spies and it's convincing, such as the film Haywire, starring Gina Carano. When she isn't tweeting anti-Semitic shit, she can actually play a character that you believe can beat the shit out of men, unlike the characters in this show. So they rescue that reporter, and then they meet in the same building under construction that was in the flashback. Interesting place to meet. Somehow it just felt right. And she tells the reporter, look, I know you took those photos of me and ruined my career, but I realize now that what I was doing was wrong. Ah, who cares? Moving on. Let's just guess what this episode's plot is about before it even starts. <clears throat> All right. A woman gets kidnapped and they have to rescue her. You've been hired to find and rescue Tess Walters. She was kidnapped in Cuba three weeks ago. Wow, shocker. So they go to a hotel in Cuba. The concierge takes out large bags of cocaine and puts it in their bags for some reason. Then they get arrested and Bosley's like, sorry guys, I can't help you. That's no good. I'm sorry ladies, but I can't help you. Good luck. What? Even the writers at this point knew that the whole woman getting kidnapped storyline was getting old. What do you have for us today? A missing persons case. You know, we seem to get a lot of those, Charlie. So they do try to change it up in a few of these episodes, which I do appreciate. Angels, I received a call from an old friend. His daughter, son-in-law, and grandkids were sailing in the Caribbean when their yacht was hijacked by pirates. Sadly, it's just too late. You don't look like kidnap and rescue specialists. You don't look like Johnny Depp, disappointment abounds. Pedro Pascal actually looks better than Johnny Depp now. 
no homo. It seems like they shot most of his scenes in an empty field away from the rest of the cast, talking on a phone. It's just funny. Then they go to a safety deposit box in a bank and they find C4 in there. There's a 30 second timer. They send Minka Kelly to evacuate the building. Yeah, I'm sure you can evacuate the entire building in 30 seconds. Then they disable the C4. Oh, that's a close one, huh? But then it just reactivates itself, so you think they're screwed. But then they just hide behind a wooden table and they're fine. I don't feel I need to go through every single episode in detail. I think you get the point. The show is just kind of boring, ultimately. And that's all I have to say about Charlie's Angels. You know, I don't think it's the worst show I've ever seen. The whole production just seems slapped together. The lighting is bad. The cinematography feels rushed. It just feels like there was no coordination as to how this show would look or be edited. There's nothing special about it, and I didn't care about the characters. The writing isn't special, and technically it isn't special either. I wouldn't recommend you watch it. And that concludes my review. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the review, because now that it's over, I'm going to kill Ralph. Do it. Do it. Go for it. Do it! Oh my god! Hello, Ralph the Movie Maker. I am Vladimir. I've been sent by the Gulag in Russia to come and bring you in and held you captive for shitting on our number one American man, Steven Seagal. Sorry, I don't speak that language. What are you speaking even? Is that Spanish?